Welcome back to the Summer Showdown Qualifiers. We're jumping into our second series of the day. It is the Spark going up against the Valiant. And if you're tuning in for the first time, Soul Dynasty give you an update on the score. 3-0 against the Charge, and their win streak is protected as of now. Looking ahead to the series, though, Valiant went up against the Soul mm -hmm. Dynasty yesterday and had a bit of difficulty in that matchup. No doubt Spark would be a more balanced opponent to go against, albeit not without some difficulty. See the match record there is on 9 and 6 over the course of the season. Uh, interestingly enough, half of those losses have come in from this stage alone. In Summer Showdown, we've already seen Spark drop down 0 and 3. They have not won a single series yet. They've won only a single map, so the map record in this stage is, I believe, 1 and 9. That was uh, the one map they got versus Chengdu the other day, and since then, you know, still awaiting their first ever actual win uh, in this sort of stage. So they've, they've got 50% of the losses just over the past two weeks it's really unfortunate valiant as well they got the three wins but still looking for number four they got most of their wins i think last stage um on a bit of a loss streak again sadly two map fives in a row i believe that a really unfortunate oh three loss versus soul but again that's soul it is what it is yeah and you probably got to look towards spark's strength of schedule with uh with who they've been playing up against i know they went up against the spark earlier in the season earlier this stage i believe as well which as we know is quite a difficult situation to deal with as we've seen a couple of times now let's pull up that spark roster see who's starting in the lineup today can't imagine there will be any surprises in the starting lineup shy alfie bernard Irony, surprise. and super rich i don't know what One happened with bernard the surprising. other day because uh we didn't get to see other day just being yesterday actually we didn't see bernard play against the jungle hunters uh gusho was actually in he was okay uh at least to start with but i think bernard has been the starting tank for the spark this entire year um we've only really ever seen gusho come in for specific winston favored maps like the gibraltars uh, or the dorados even but for the most part, this would this would be what I consider to be the Sparks primary starting lineup. Shy Alfie, Burner, Irony, and Super Rich, right? These are the five guys you want to see. Um and I ain't talking about the burger chain. As the Spark here. I was gonna say they're they, not there. I was gonna go there as well. They're not overpriced, are they? <laughs> uh maybe just shy. I don't know. I can tell you. They did <laughs> they did get they did offload Liga recently, so they did cut some costs. But Alonjo Spark, uh, known to have larger rosters, but Still, with a larger roster, you should be able to find your starting five as your, your main squad, your A-team, and this is the A-team. Uh, it's been a rough stage so far for the, the, the Hunger Spark, given that they they are at least number three in the region, but they haven't felt like they're number three in the region so far in the Summer Showdown, and that's got to change soon. Their opponents, the LA Valiant now, where themselves currently 0-3, but they've at least got four maps. I mean, their map record is 4-9 instead of 1-9. As I mentioned, the LA Valiant have gone to map 5 twice now, but unfortunately lost that map 5 twice in a row as well. Map 5 versus Philly. Map 5 versus the Charge. Couldn't get a win there. I think one of those at least should have been a win for them. But I digress. Uh, you either get the win or you don't, and then they obviously couldn't get anything done versus Soul. We're going to be seeing the same five members on board for the Valiant as well. The, the Dia Queen, most importantly, is the, uh, the, jewel, the crown jewel piece. Definitely been an incredible standout performance from Dia on this one. I mean, we just spoke about a lot about the accuracy and the, the pre-firing, if you will, and some of these abilities have been fantastic from Dia. Um, but yes, the usual five-man lineup from the Valiant as they'll go and contest against the Spark. I have a feeling if the Valiant win this series, Avril, it will be on map number five. That's my I will assessment say going into this one. This, to me, is a stage def uh, defining win or loss because uh, mm -hmm. we, we had a little bit of chat a little uh, earlier where I kind of mentioned that to make it to the Summer Showdown, to get top four and make the tournament, I think you need a minimum record of three and three. If you don't get three and three, you probably don't make it to the tournament unless multiple teams get two and four, in which case you get a tiebreaker and the team that has the best record within the two and fours will make it in. But uh, assuming we're not going to get tiebreakers, Probably looking at three and three is the safest bet. Both teams currently at, currently at zero and three, which means the team that loses cannot get three and three anymore. Uh, which is the final mm -hmm. pathway, in my opinion, at least safely to qualification. So, given that pathway, you do have to win this. This is a must-win game for Valiant or Spark to make the top four and reach the summer showdown. For Spark, it'll be their third tournament in a row. Uh, for Valiant, it would be their first. So I know it means a lot to the Valiant because after this, they have to try and stay alive, uh, heads above water against the charge to make it into the play-ins to even reach playoffs. And for a team like Valiant, if they don't do that, then they won't have made any 
uh, events so far this year. They'll be eventless, which they won't be the only team be being eventless, but it will be a bit of a sad case for them. Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, who the, just double checking who the Sparkle had to play against so far. Bear in mind, okay, so you talked about 3-3 being the golden number. They've played against the currently the two leading teams at the moment. They've got their yep. Dynasty match. They've had their uh, Dragons match up. Those are the two expected outcomes for them to lose. And then they also lost against the, the Hunters, as you said, the other day. If you look at basically on where we think the teams stand from a power level point of view, they've actually got the easier latter half. So these next three matches sure. for the Spark, these, are, these in theory, could all be Which the means... wins for them. Which, which means no more excuses route. for the Spark. Really, it just means no more excuses yes. for the Spark. Exactly. We even saw from, from uh, Reinforce on Watchpoint as well. It's just like, okay, well, you know, they lost the three best teams. So that means Spark is number four. And if you're number four, you still make the tournament. That's the <laughs> that's the, 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 the line that's being towed currently. Custer's back is in that the Valiant. Is that the copium line? I know. Speaking of Custer back in the Valiant, here's a fun fact for you. The last time yeah. the Valiant actually beat the Hunger Spark was when Custer was still playing. It was back in 2019 in July. <laughs> so... It's been that long since the Valiant have actually ever beaten the Spark. Since then, Spark has won four times in a row. Uh, so, Cus is still holding on to glory days of that one. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Look, look. I think it's not out of the question for, for Valiant to no. win this one. I don't think this is one of those, like, oh, you're playing against Sol. Bad luck, I guess. Very winnable yep. on both sides. It's blue versus pink. Everyone playing the same things as expected. Very important game, as mentioned. Line up here, Easy Han spraying through to the back line. Dia, the pressure. Oh, we need some assistance from the rest of the team here. Retreating back, giving up so much space over to the Spark right now. Couldn't find a connection there from the Shy. The shot, the shot will go through, and it's enough to take out Dia. First kill going in the way of Spark. And he's capitalized it into the map capture, but there's an answer back onto Shy. So it is 4v4, but you're missing your tank at the moment. Not the position to be in. Alpha E goes to pick up Sarshin. This is not the start the Valley wanted, but there's still a long way to go. Again, map percentage, very sneaky of them from Lengsa, but ultimately they have to give that over to the Spark to get the first count. Lengsa's got to be careful not to die there, actually makes it out alive, and that would have been really risky, because if Lengsa does die, then all that good work to delay the capture would be for naught, as Valiant would not be able to regroup properly. But here we go, all five up. Becky is staying competitive on all charge, despite losing that initial fight. Just rushing in, super shy, taking damage. Yeah, there's the emergence we were looking for very fast. Shy gets topped up. Was the focus initially? Great shot there. Irony takes out Lengsa. This traded Lucio. So stabilized it all. But Alpha He Yi will cut down. Easy harm. Becky follows up as well. Just needs Daya and Sarshin to disappear. Sarshin staying alive a little bit longer than they need to necessarily, but it's not the end of the world. Not a huge stagger. 30% in climbing for the Spark. I really thought Lengsa had the boop onto Hungjo Spark to send them to the low ground. That would have split up the Hungjo Spark incredibly well, and that uh, would be one way for the Valiant to get ahead in the fight. But unfortunately, ended up booping the Hungjo Spark further, deeper towards the Valiant, which is not ideal, but it is how the fight goes. And ends up being caught in the middle of the Hungjo Spark and gets completely destroyed. But at least the trade will come through on the Super Witch yet. A trade on the rallies, both will be spent. Plays, Alpha Yi Wait, no. Yeah, it's going to be after follow that up after Becky. Beats traded as well. Lengsa doesn't quite have theirs. Becky's gone down mid blade. It just leaves Alpha Yi free to pick up that kill on Sarshin. Yeah. Lengsa's going to have that beat advantage coming into these final fights that come out of round number one. Well, the time that you would want the beat was in the previous fight, unfortunately. So it's one of those exactly. silver lining situations where it's like we couldn't use the beat in the old fight that we wanted to, but you'll get to use it in the fight afterwards where Burnout has a Rampage available a lot faster than Dia for what it's worth. But given that uh, Spark have been winning these fights, it's probably not out of the wildest thing to imagine. For this last fight territory, though. This ends now. Easy versus Shite. Overclock being used by Easy Hunt first. Alfie is in his face. The beat comes out from Lengsa as expected to answer Bernard's Rampage. The back line were the only two of Valiant to find that anti-heal. Missing Easy Han who can get back into the fight. D is about to go down as well. They need a support. No damage dealer. No tank. Sarshin's about to follow up as well. And this is Spark. They're going to close out round number one. 100% to zero. Yeah, I mean, a decent amount of kills being traded. Well, actually, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm completely lying. There's only two kills that uh, <laughs> LA Valiant got, which means three players that died at all. Alpha E, Burner, and Irony had zero deaths. And uh, Becky got the only two kills so far for the Valiant. So nobody else in the Valiant got a single frag. Becky's got two. A bit of an alt charge differential on that map as well. Again, the, the critical fight for me was, you know, double rally, 
double Dragon Blade, but only one Sound Barrier, because Lengsa was, uh, what, 10, 15, 20% off. Which, yeah, about eight, 18, 18. Which is seven, just, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of what happens when you're losing. It would be great if he had the ultimate and had kept up, but, you know, when you're losing, you're typically going to be behind, so it's more impressive that the other members were keeping up. Uh, wow. Now we move over towards downtown. Again, that was 100 to 0 on Mecha Base, so hoping for a little bit more out of the valley this time. I would like to see Sanctuary today. So hopefully, LA Valley can take us there. Sanctuary's closed. Night off. time after hours. Ah! Sure, they do night tours, though. A lot of places. Probably be beautiful at night. Make extra money if they could charge a premium for it. Yeah. Just on the cusp of going down again. Stain for now. Becky also needed some assistance right now. Spark have control of the Mega, so that's pretty vital for them to be able to just take out the air, remove a sustain option for the Valiant. And they're just going to catch the exit frags here as well. Spark taking up his first fight. They will by virtue of that good first count. Yeah, Shy Sek, two kills there. Snipe on a deer, exactly as you want. Valiant is still on the same two final blows they had in the previous round. And it's a fresh round now, but I believe they all died in that last fight. So a five and zero collection is Valiant. Can't really, really get too much more done there. And, uh, you know, this time everyone is basically buying an ultimate except for Lynx. Ironically, Lynx is the one that's ahead. But Super H down, this is an opportunity. Five versus four. Valiant can surely turn this around. Now see them go forward and just charge into the backside. They're trading headshots for the time being. It's Dia again with a carnage to find Shy. Becky with the cut from Burner. And now the flip coming in for the Valley. For the first time, they will see percentage on the board this map. They will. And uh, a little unfortunate, the session does go down there. Shy collects a bit of tax, slows down the respawn slightly. Both teams should still have the 5v5 at the same time, but does put Sashin down a little bit slower compared to Irony in the rally race. It's Lengsa that will find the first ultimate of the round so far between both teams. Uh, doubtful that this will be a tempo beat. I suspect this will more, be more likely that a counter Alpha use blade. You're deep enough now into the round that you are suspecting flies like Alpha you should have blade, so. They lost Irony as well on the entry. This is not good for the Spark. Two fights back to back where they've lost the support on the entry. And they've not been able to reclaim the effort. Get the flip though, because the fight's happening off point. Easy Han and Dia picking up two kills, but it's not a fight win for the Spark just yet. Alpha will try and get out, but nope. Cut down before they drop, and the flip comes back. So nice stall tactics on the percentage, but it will cost them yeah, their life. You do steal the cap away, but. It does kind of translate into, it doesn't exactly equal out mathematically, but because Alpha U takes his, uh, you know, feeds his own life away for that, Valiant kind of earn a little bit of free percentage while Spark have to reset. So Ooh, up okay, Blade. That. Sashin using the Rally, Irony going to use that as well. B comes up to Super, it's just in the nick of time. Becky will have some support as well to stay up. Alpha U's Blade this time yeah, around dead. has the overlap in their favor. Rampage was big from Bernard. To shut down the support onto Dia, meaning Alpha Yi can just do whatever the hell he wants to that tank. Couple of answers back from the Valiant, but it's not enough to stem the bleeding they're suffering already. Tell you what, one more might do the trick. Lengza finding Super Rich. They migrate back to the point, potentially stalling this one out. Flip comes in. It's going to be about 80% on the board for the Valiant. And Lengza gets away as well, so now you can speed boost the rest of the Valiant in. Look at that. So as soon as the cap comes through, Valiant are here to respond. They can't quite touch in time. I think it probably would have been difficult to touch in time anyway. Dia has the extra rally advantage, but rampage advantage rather. But with Lynx down, can you go for this 5v4? Gonna try. Attempt for it. Rampage committed. It's now a 3v5. And it's just all going wrong. I'd like the Irony attempt lives. from the Valiant, but maybe should have been more conservative with that ultimate. And uh, the one play that did get hit by the Rampage doesn't go down, so that's one major tool off the board now. I don't really suspect that we'll see another Rampage from either team for the rest of this round now as we head into the 70s and perhaps the 80s in just a few seconds yet. LA Valley have made this one a lot more competitive, but the Spark that's about to equalize, overtake, they've done that now. And Alpha Yi is about to leave, and getting the last ultimate, the first of the last round of ultimates, I should probably say. With Alpha Yi down, Ooh, that's an opportunity good opener. to find the critical kill. Yeah, those, that's the accuracy we were talking about in the pre-game, Avril Dia coming in with the Jagged Knight. Becky holding the corridor for now. Cap did come in. They actually got back yeah, wow, there, I believe. It. Nice little flip coming in. 
And now they just actually gonna crush the Spark. They're gonna compact them. This is so dangerous for Spark, actually. We might get to see Sanctuary after all. Percentage being held by the value. They're picking up stagger kills, taxing Spark on the way out. Alfie attempting to do some delay. Oh my god. Maybe trigger the overtime. But he had to give his life for that. Valley are gonna survive. Valley are gonna get the flip. They're gonna get the primary kill that they need. If it wasn't for Dia getting the knife into Alpha Yi's back, dagger through the heart, that would have possibly have just been the two and zero for Hangzhou Spark. As Alpha Yi would have had the only ultimate online, Valiant would have been kind of struggling to do anything about it, having no counters available. And now like Valiant would have been in a very sore spot indeed, but the Hangzhou Spark, they lose out on an opportunity to clean things up in LA Valiant off the back of some brilliant pickups. Again, primarily off Dia's blade. They gotta force their way into Sanctuary, closed or not. It's a night tour, I told you. They wanna make that extra money, man. Yeah, they uh, like phoned up the groundskeeper. I don't know who's in charge. Yep. They said, look, <laughs> the Sanctuary up. groundskeeper. Yeah. yeah. They, can't use, they can't bang the drum though. They don't want any noise complaints. So, gonna have to avoid hitting that at this point. Daytime, uh, drumming only. Nighttime, no drum. Yeah. Yep. You have the bobbies around. Drum. Probably makes a big sound. Let's have Shy. Just, uh, charging up, ready for a railgun shot. No targets for them to shoot at just yet, but it could be as to get pick on. Could pump a lot of damage into Deer, but it's actually super rich. It's found out by Easy Han's Ash. So there is a variation in the comps. Burner answers back with a support kill onto Sarshin. It looks like both supports have been out of the fight for the spark. Oh no, again with these frags on the exit. Trading back and forth, but ultimately they give up that map position and map capture over to the Valiant. It's two and two. In terms of frags, both the Junk Queens are still dead, so it's a DPS and support only fight so far. And Shite will get the first of those necessary kills to flip over. Only the 14% for the LA Valley. It's, uh, it's a minor detail. See if it ends up making the difference towards the end. There, Alpha has to be very careful to buy. Yeah, it doesn't want to go down here, especially when they're getting set up for a five-person defense. See the value get clustered. Get split around the point. They're going to try and attack them off the front. It looks like great pullback into shy. Very vulnerable, but will escape. They've spilled blood in the water, so they're going to send all the piranha after him. Becky gets caught out by the disruptor shot. Charging up for the railgun. Doesn't get the kill onto Lengser. Gets him out of the fight long enough to maintain the map capture. Easy Han's still so far removed from this fight right now, playing at range exactly what they need to do. It doesn't mean when it changes so quickly, they do get caught out sometimes. They can't keep up with the pace of the fight necessarily. Slow going. As we have nearly 50% online for the Spark. Now in Valiant struggling to find a fight entry. Now the first Opus online for Super Rich. Easy Han looking towards the Bob. Alley Valley, still no further progress towards the point itself. They're going to take a fight around the side, it is. Or rather, Spark will force it upon them. Thrown into the middle, it's in a good placement here. The fight continues to be where it is, but they migrate back round to the point. Beats committed by both sides. Rally coming out from Irony, there's a support ultimate advantage to deal with Becky's blade. Alfie holding on to theirs, and they hold on too long as the Dynamite will take them out over time. Sashin using the rally at the end just to try and guarantee the deal, but it's not gone right for them. Two drop despite the support ultimate overlap they had in their favor. Rampage goes through, won't find the connection from Dyer. Bernard still standing strong right now, cannot find these exit kills. Flip comes in for the Valiant. It looks like the 1v1 is not going to go strong as it quickly does not become a 1v1. And Valiant win that decisively at the end. Uh, good clean up idea towards the end to allow the Valiant to now finally find some catch up. Alpha E dying in the middle of the fight is not burning down due to the dynamite at Easy Han. No opportunity to pull the blade out, couldn't get the healing. Key ultimate that they need, as well as the rampage. So they have, they being the spark here, enough resources to I think finish this round from 76 onwards. No real defenses from the Valiant. They can allow the blade to come through first, and then Bernard sees a good opportunity for the rampage, can also go for it. Alpha Yi now gets to use that blade. Deer will be taken out by the carnage. Alpha Yi changing focus. Won't find a follow up kill. 5v4 at the moment. 5v3. Assassin's off the map. Alpha Yi in the face of Easy Han. It's going to be Super Rich picking up a boop kill as he takes Easy Han off the map. Yep. With the sound wave. And now there's one more attempt for the Valley to try and come back and get a flip here to win this first round. I mean, small detail there, but Super Rich getting the kill credit means you get the ult charge off the. Full health of the bar remaining from Easy Han, which is a huge lot of something. 
final fight for sure now, and a very aggressive push. Yeah, and followed up with a rampage on the D, and that's going to be it. Don't see a way that the Valiant get this, unless they get a sneaky back cap that they spark are wise to their tricks now. Bob goes on to the point, going to be held there. Becky's dropped, so Bob will booped compensate up. for that extra man, but he's booped off the point. Bye, Bob. No disruption for you. Spark will claim the map. But boy, the day have to work for that one, Avril. Hongzo Spark lead the series. All three, uh, well, actually not all three. I think the first was 100 to zero, wasn't it, on Mecha Base? But the other two was yep. a lot more contentious, given that, you know, especially on Downtown, that's when the LA Valiant got that round win. A very critical Jagged Blade connection to Alpha E will secure that for the LA Valiant through Diga's Joker Queen. But then we go over towards Sanctuary uh, and Hangzhou Spark, outside of maybe like one or two rough fights, with Alpha E dying with Blade Up via the Dynamite from Easy Hunt, outside of a couple of fights like that. Hangzhou Spark seemed to be in a pretty good position. They did sort of lose the first neutral, lose the cap initially for 14%, but they had the lead. They had the 76% up. They had the blade into the rampage. They had all the resources. The Valiant would run dry. Only Bob could save them, and even then, Bob came in slightly too late. Easy Hunt didn't have it, and Bob got booped off anyway, so Valiant. No dice there. Came close, but no map versus the Spark. Well, there are plenty of more opportunities to try and win out some maps. We already know we're guaranteed the map four of the Valiant R to take this series in the end. But when you join us after the break, we'll be going to Hollywood. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the Summer Showdown. The Spark are leading the series. The Valiant did make them work for it towards the end on Busan. But we turn our attention over to Hollywood. It's going to be our second map of the series. Yeah, Valiant are trying. They really are putting in the effort and they are making it competitive. Uh, it didn't look like it was going to go to a third round. We finally did get to some Sanctuary, courtesy of the LA Valiant. But uh, a, a short trip. I, mean, I don't know that we saw all the sights. You know, didn't get to bang the drum. Uh, it's quick in and Not out. Loud. Feels like the groundskeeper just kind of did a solid for us. But like, you get five minutes, then you're out. <laughs> I'm usually not allowed take to do your, this. Take your you Instagram photos minutes. and get out. Uh, yeah, so take your IG photos and get out. <laughs> we just got a brief visit, a little detour through Sanctuary, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem too difficult with the spark at the end of the day. They set themselves up to have to win that one uh, eventually quite comfortably, at least towards the end. So Hollywood now. Let's see if Valiant get a, a bounce back here. As I'm really enjoying Hollywood in this meta, personally, so far, I think the B point has a lot of um, great playmaking potential. And we actually saw Hollywood between Soul and Valiant, I believe, yesterday. And Valiant managed to cap B A, but couldn't quite get through B, so there's something to say there about Valiant being semi-competitive versus Soul on this map. I'd like to see them develop from where they were yesterday on this map now to go further against the Hungry Spark. Becky's being a little bit sneaky, playing forward. Probably wants to get that early bit of charge before he dashes back to the safety of his team. A few shurikens, no doubt, going to be throwing away after Spark. Lengs is also just there, just in case, I imagine, just to escort them if things go wrong. The rest of the team lying up around the corner. They're going to try and get themselves out and challenge the Spark So let's take early. a look at this. I was gonna say, I don't think that's a real. The burner, uh, I think the burner, Zarya was just to put a bubble onto LPE to get a snipe out. Now they'll everyone will change to what they're supposed to be playing. So that's cool. Just to see if Valiant want to get tricky. Uh, remember here as well, teams don't really succeed in spawn camping A. So it's not like Circuit no. Royale or another map. D has to be a little bit careful. Shout's already been burned. So that's a long cooldown now. Spark can probably make a timing play off that with Burner's Shout. Yeah, Alpha has gone straight to the back line to try and attempt to do that. I mean, they've got so much space right now. Spark, pretty well placed. They have control of the point. They're going to make the Valiant progress onto them. Somehow. Still sustained, but now they take the advantage with Easy Han railing Bernard. Oh! Two kills back, though. This is the okay. cleanup coming in from the charge. Lengza being hunted down, but they can escape. Tax kills on the exit. They've got a Lucia to try and deal with. Big stagger if they finally confirm it. Lengza goes down. One more isolated. Becky, what are you doing there, friend? Well, he's got nowhere else to go. I mean, I think he was just trying to get out somewhere, be annoying, and just, I don't know, play his life. But everyone's dead. The fight's over anyway. Uh, whether yeah. Becky dies there or elsewhere, doesn't really matter. Shy with the late kill the easy hunch to make things worse for the Alley Valiant. To me, that fight was really should have been over when Diga took a bunch yes. of damage well before the fight even began. They fall back, Dia has to burn a shout just to get out alive. And Bernard with the shout advantage gives Hunger Spark so much room to operate. And the fact that Valiant lived as long as they did was quite impressive, but you know, when they stop, when they start dying, they really start dying big. Yeah, really not good at uh, loss mitigation, should we say. They're up there on the rooftop for the time being. Here. Alfie, you know where he is, but they've already lost Dia. They weren't able to account for how much impact Alpha you could have as he finds a second in this fight against Becky's blade. He will finally get taken out there even, as well. He's not even blading, so he's just no. done. He's just straight frank. Did it with Shurikens. So, I mean, and the payload's still pushing. Best of both yeah. worlds. You're, you're winning this fight. The payload's free pushing. Becky's bladed. You haven't bladed. You just traded the rally for that one. Very fair trade for, I think, the spark given that. Uh, you know, often it's like a rally charge reasonably quick here. Yeah, so to blade them sometimes. Here comes an RPE now. Yeah, no sound barrier from Mesa. Dia again. Got the pocket from uh, from Sashian, but it's not enough. Two kills coming in over to the Spark. Up onto the rooftop to go and try and contest Easy Han. Oh my god, the reinforcements coming up the hill. Mesa. <laughs> no I chance don't think this payload minute. stopped. I don't think this no, payload not, stopped it is higher not way stopped. through B. It, it really has just been one big push, and Dia has now got the bad spawn, so he'll unfortunately Stagger. go down again. It's been super unlucky for Dia. Like, all of these fights on, it starts from A, right? He gets chunked down, loses shout, they lose A. B, I don't know how he got isolated and killed, but he got isolated and killed. Uh, and now the end of B, 
He gets the badge spawn uh, and is caught in the middle of nowhere because, uh, well, he's got nowhere to go. And he gets killed again. So, what kind of negative impact from Dia, sadly, is a man that's capable of having amazing junk coin performances. But here, so far in Hollywood, it's been definitely miss. I think that's a conscious decision, isn't it? Like, easy to just constantly go for them. Yeah, dies out the ultimate. Sorry, shy. Take Bernard's then going to pick up Dia again. Alfie just harass on the exit. Sarshan's doing their best to stay alive. Will ultimately go down as well. They're so oh, isolated so away from the team. Him. This is painful so to watch in a way. And, and I think part of it, B, was also just a uh, ult advantage snowball as well, because you remember that the Alpha Yi blade got pulled and Lynx didn't quite have the counter available. He was only several percentage points off the sound barrier. But then Becky also had his blade shut down on B, and, and now as the fights move along, it's just non-stop aggression leading to, well, say aggression, non-stop just, you know, normal play, not even being overly aggressive, just walking in, getting the damage done, fragging down the valley and pushing through. Oh no, can't convert that. Forces the rest of the valley to come forward Dude, there they, to try and help they Sarshan. They left only got to try. Oh, Spark? they should not be doing that. Spark have been folded a little bit here. This is the first signs of life we've seen from the Valiant on this map. And they're finally able I mean, to push back Spark. That, that's a whiff from the Spark. What are they doing? I don't yes. know if there's not a miscommunication. Burner and the rest of the Spark decide to back on out and Becky's going to send his regards over to Alpha. That might have been Alpha as well, I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, you saw that Irony was still pretty far forward as Hunter Spark started backing out. Maybe they miscommunicated the intentions, but it seemed like Irony didn't know that they were leaving. So Irony was still, like, not quite committed, but he was definitely the furthest one forward as Bernard runs away. And then Valiant's like, well, that's a free freak kill. And they get that. Able to capitalize on the mistakes. It's quite good for them. There's the B coming out just to answer the Becky Blade. Alpha E still holding on to theirs. Bernard's going to cut through and find free with the Rampage. Now Alpha E pulls out their blade. Sarshin's the first. Easy Hunt the second. They'll rotate back around to the point to find Becky. Their appetite cannot be satiated. And they're just going to clean up the stragglers here. Push the payload over the oh, line. Spark with a hefty time bank moving in. Oh. They have to go to a second attempt. This reminds me of the Soul Valiant game all over again. Where... As I said, Valiant did cap A, but then they got held up on B. Soul finished the map was the second part of the story that I didn't tell. Mm -hmm. Well, you get it now, and very similar to that, Spot finished the whole map. And now we'll see if Valiant can get at least A, which is what they got versus the, the Soul Dynasty. But again, we need more than that. We want to stay in the series and look competitive. That was not a very competitive defense from no. the Valiant at all. I think they won a grand total of one fight. A single fight, and that was and the, that uh, was off of that was off of quite a well documented irony mistake. Uh, no, I well, think it was a mistake. team mistake. I think I think the team, team mistake, left but, irony out yeah. to dry. I think uh, he, he, if if it's an irony mistake, then what they did was they told irony to back out, and he didn't listen. Or my assumption is they just didn't say it, and irony was like, "What's going on, guys? Oh, why did you all leave? Oh, I'm by myself." <laughs> what it looked like to me. I know from from a support perspective, that's usually what happens. You just kind of get left out, like, "Oh, thanks, dudes." Want to tell me you're leaving next time? Thanks. Um, but outside of that, flawless from Spark. Yeah. Kind of makes me worried for what's going to happen on this defense now. You know, is this a full held on point A? A Valiant going to struggle to even get points on the board with this one? Hope not. And I hope it doesn't come at the cost of a big mistake gonna, from the Spark. I, I know Valiant like to go to map fives, but if they lose this map, it's going to have to be a reverse sweep, which is... When Not you good. look at the Valiant pathways to map fives, they never get there through a reverse sweep. They get there by either reaching match point first at a two and one, or like doing a soft, not quite reverse sweep, but being down one and you know, being down one two one, and then getting two in a row or getting one in a row. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just the alternate. Being down. The alternate. They they're not good at streaking. They're not good at streaking. They're not good at reverse sweeping, but they are good at reaching map five. But it's not a reverse sweep. <laughs> Which means it needs to be a one and one. Which means they need to win this map. Very patient, very slow from the Valiant. They got through that first choke hold, but they haven't got a foot in on the point just yet. Still having to run into the wall of pink, but it's the spark. Dash through there onto the back line from Becky. Alfie has their number. In back, shout out from Dia. We're moving them back on the point itself. But there's, oh my god, when it comes, it comes in waves. 
Avril, the uh -huh. entire team uh -huh. just folds all at once. And the spark deflect the first offensive. It's this shoreline backing out way further than it should, and then you realize the tsunami, tsunami's coming in. Yep. That's kind of all that is. As uh, you know, when 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 sparks start getting kills and Valiant start dropping members, do they drop big time? And that's kind of what we saw on the A defense for Valiant as well. At least on the A attack, they get another go of it. This is where Spark, where they continue continually win these opening fights, get the snowball ahead. I mean, look how far ahead Super Rich is from Lynx. So we, we've already seen the difference that like 10% ult charge on the Lucios can mean. Balance trade. No Junker Queens on the map. Valiant have point presence at the moment. Got a third. They have got some this progress to take away. This even is my dream Overwatch game. One. Like, just only DPS and sports. You know what? Take out the sports too. Just five DPS versus five <laughs> Just damage DPS. Deepers? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> well, they're locked in the tiny Overwatch room. Alpha E forced out. Too many bodies in there for him to get involved in that fight. It has stagnated the push. Junk Queen should be returning back to the fight. Shouts are there. Beat from Alpha E. Answer back with the lengths of barrier. D has gone down. So has Irony. Cut through from Alpha E to find Sashin. There is an advantage of bodies on the floor for Spark as they're taxing kills on the exit. Lengza gets out, but Easy Han will not as they find Becky as well. Spark reset their defense. Stagger. Lengza! Yep. Yep, it is a stagger. Why was Lengza still there? Wait, they wait, they snuck in. Uh, I don't know, maybe he just struggled to get out. It's hard to get out sometimes, uh, especially when you get railed. Here, 41% though, so they did. I, I don't know at what point they snuck in a tick, but they snuck in a tick. They got the tick when they got the the um, when both John Coons lost. They managed to get point presence. I Spark see. Made them a lot of respect. Alrighty. Well, okay. Well, they got something to work with. Yes. And now they have ultimates as well. Alfie is already bladed. So now it's Becky's turn. Yeah, rally's being traded as well. So that will be the difference maker. Oh, shy. Oh no! Oh, it's all the one. Becky shy. doesn't even get to use that blade. He could be shy, he could be coy, but he's being aggressive today. Very forward from the damage dealer. And they're going to send Lengza back to the score room. 45 seconds remaining. This has got to be the final attempt from the oh, yeah. Valiant. They will have a rampage. They'll have an overclock. Burner has a rampage of their own to try and counter. No introverted behavior from Shy today. That nope. is straight in your face. You know exactly the kind of message that he's sending you today. Both of your DPS is instantly railed down by the overclock. You really needed the blade as well, Becky. Cheeky has angle from Burner. He's going to come from behind. Rampage. Rampage. That's Good move. move though. Yes, damage mitigation, but it still causes Sashin to go down. Super Rich gets caught by the Jagged Blade. Big from not here. over yet. Yeah, you're going to have follow-up. There's the overclock as well, coming into effect. The Burner's been removed. Valiant getting onto the point. Pre-fire on the corner with the Carnage, but it's not enough to take Alfie down. So he will deflect the kill. Gets the mini to try and sustain. Spark can still fight this one. Shy goes down. Becky, 1v1 oh, against Alfie, Alfie e. E, and he comes out on top. That leaves it open for the Lucio, but no one touches. Spark goes to match point, and the reverse sweep has to come out from the Valiant if they want to go to map number five. Now, uh, Sash and try, but he just wasn't there. Uh, again, not a C9 because Valiant just lose the fight anyway. Mm -hmm. If you lose yep. Dia and Alfie E goes sicko mode and just kills two in the neutral, because, I mean, what else can you do? Uh, we get to enjoy Shy railing people in the play of the game in the lobby. Maybe you will mm -hmm. at home enjoy that moment a little bit later on via the replays being shown. But for now, Spark 2-0, looking dominant, looking good. They're playing their A team. They're playing their true starting lineup with everybody that they were winning with in midseason Madness and prior. And the LA Valiant, try as they might, te technically speaking, this is an even worse result versus the, the Spark than it was versus Soul. At least versus Soul, they kept A here. They struggled, man. Hollywood was not a close map at all. We're going to need to get the defibrillators out for the Valiant right now. Bring them back to life as they head over to map number three. When we come back from the brick, Junkertown's going to be here waiting for you.
Welcome back to the Summer Showdown. The Spark are leading the series 2-0 against the Valiant. They now have to go three maps in a row on a reverse streak if they want to take us to map number five. Very out of the ordinary if you're a Valiant fan. So, yeah, you're going to have to pull in some massive power bombs, some massive energy supplements to be able to get them to that position. But Spark looking really good right now. Far more dominant on Hollywood than what it looked like on Busan. Very competitive Busan. Very one-sided Hollywood though, Avril. I, yeah, and then you look across the board, I'm, I'm checking some stats at the moment as well, and something I didn't even realize that happened in the game was that Alfie you had only one death. Everybody else died an oh. expected number of times, but Alfie you only died the one time, and I think it was that one death of Lengsa, which Becky then dropped uh, a couple of crouches on as well, and that ended up being the only time Alfie you died, but uh, I don't know, he was he was absolutely pounding otherwise. Bernard's been having a, a great day as well. He's got, he actually ended that map with the highest amount of final blows, uh, 12. So, it's been solid across the board. You've seen Irony and Super Rich kind of get active in the kill feed. Shia, the two major shutdowns in that one fight as well, destroyed Easy Han, deleted Becky's blade. Um... You can even just see it on the face of the valley, and I think they're a little bit stumped here. This is this is not. I was going to say not a good day, but realistically, not a good qualifier at all. This is would be the fourth loss in a row. You know, they'd be doing it in LA Gladiators here if they lose again. So it's just uh, it's not. Yeah. It's not pretty. Unlike the Gladiators, though, they haven't banked hey? a lot of points from earlier in the season. Yeah. So <laughs> it's uh it is really coming down to crunch time as we move into the final stages of not only the uh, the stage but also the overall season. Uh, Avril, you know, not looking the strongest when it comes to the win-loss record across the board at the moment for the Valiant. Yeah, and I mean, like, who, who who have the Valiant beaten? They've beaten Chengdu. I'm going to take a look at their record yep. right now just so I make sure yeah, that's correct. Yeah, let's do it. Um, their first win of the entire season, which actually broke the loss streak, was versus Chengdu. That was in the kickoff clash qualifiers. And then mid-season mm. Manus, they had the reverse sweep versus Philly. So I'm actually wrong. They have reverse sweep before. So it is possible okay. they can when you count them out. Uh, and then they have the 3-1 victory versus Guangzhou Charge, but their record versus Charge is like 1-2 this season, which is not ideal. They've only had the three wins. Here comes a TP play straight out the gate from the Spark. Um, this is pretty cute, but all it really means is you swap sides because you still don't have Halo Control. Valiant and Happy yep. allow you to TP away. And now Valiant will play the Spark defensive spawn, and uh, Spark will play the opposite end. Notably, the, the Spark still have shy and spawn, so maybe they can set up a crossfire. I think that's what they're going for here. Let's shut down the available angles. Oh, the payload's gone! They've got the payload! They've walked Valiant, it out! They've walked it contest. out! Oh my god, they got caught off guard. They were so distracted by Shy giving a little bit of crossfire that they stepped away for cover. And then Super Rich just comes flying in to take the payload out from underneath them. It's a back cap in the strangest way. And now the Spark are cleaning up the fight. You're supposed, oh. to, you're supposed to stall the payload. If you're spawn camping, you need to control the payload. What? How did that happen? That they the just, they, they, they panicked. They panicked we, we from the crossfire. The we, we panned the camera away for like two seconds. And I'm like, wait a minute, the payload's gone. Valiant, <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> Oh, Super Rich just carjacking him at this point. Alfie just waiting there at the bottom. Just slides it out of the driveway. <laughs> Don't even turn on the engine, just release the brakes and the, let that one the roll alarm down doesn't the driveway. Even go off. The alarm doesn't even go off, Apple. It's disabled for some reason. <laughs> Keys are in the ignition, ready to go. <laughs> and the spark carry forth with that same energy, taking everything they want from the Valiant right now. They are putting up a bit of resistance here on point A. Zuhan will find a frag onto Shy. But ultimately, this is point A just going the way of Spark. They get that extension and they're already onto the second section of the map. I know. Look how much time is there. It's, it's, we yeah, haven't this really is had ridiculous. a slowdown. This has been one gigantic push from the Hangzhou Spark, similar to actually what we've got in Hollywood. Uh, that has had no slowdown. Alfie is he's just hungry for blood. He's been fragging out. That hasn't stopped since the second map. Or realistically, the first map. Um, God, at least Easy Hunter has a bomb. They've got something to work with. That's... Silver lining here for the Valley. They got they a beat coming up, up as well, though. actually get a fight going. Yeah, beats around the corner as well for Lengsa, so they have some defensive options. Gonna have to use that for Alfie's blade. He's been sitting on that, ready to go. Talk about him fragging out. Here's a chance for him to pick up some more. Becky has the answer. So, ultimate economy, not too bad for Valiant, all things considered. When you look at it, they are behind, but still got some options to try and mitigate the storm that's about to hit them. Actually, a high ground here as well. Okay, this is easy on dice. Okay, well, 
Yeah, so does Shy. Traded. So they traded back for damage. Alfie's blade in the middle. Goes for a few cut throughs. Bit of cleave damage passed onto the valley. And now they're oh, running they down Sarsu with a rally. Oh, so sad. That's no Brigitte available for the Valiant right now. Becky gets dropped as well. They can turn their attention to Dia. There are five members compacting Dia in a corner. And that's the tank removed. They'll walk this one in. Maybe they get a touch out here. But it's not looking good for the Valiant right now, Avril. No. Be Becky's gone Echo now. I actually think Echo's okay on B on C, but it does say that at this point, Valiant have basically given up on this B defense. In fact, they're not even going to go yeah. for the touch anymore. They're just going to set up on the high ground, and it's going to be another 4 minutes and 40 seconds in the time bank as the Spark continually push on through. They've still not lost a single fight. He is about to hit the Rampage, but that's all they have at the bank. Sessions. Quite sad, uh, he still has that rally, and speaking of sad, Easy Han is not going to be too pleased. Poked immediately into that railgun headshot from Shy. Just trying to contest them over on the turnstile. It's a bit of more than they can chew in this instance. Caleb will walk forward now. Becky has to play around the turnstile well. Oh, I saw know. that, Shy. Oh, I saw that. You see? He didn't uh, He didn't exo jump onto the higher ground, I caught it. In 4K. Oh. Or 1080, which <laughs> in, in any way. Forget I said that. It anyway. says a lot about the, it says a lot about the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rampage finds free. Nice shutdown onto Alfie. So this is what Valiant needs to be able to build a defense. Becky going wild in the corridor with the damage to get it down. But as uh, for that counter attack from the Valiant Avro, I was about to say, it says a lot about the yeah. state of the game where the only flaw you can well, find from Shy is missing a jump. <laughs> I think that's a lot of, I think that's a, also a lot of that fight came down to Dia landing a pretty sick Rampage. Three or yeah. four members, I believe. And Becky with a huge cleanup after that with his Echo. But uh, Dia setting it up. Little Dia is the T in the T ball. And then Becky uh, gets a little softball. Let's uh, just talk two different types of balls. If you get what I'm saying there. He had, he had the setup, he had the layup there. Now yeah, balls are being rampage. slung around. I get that. I get that. Bernard with the shutdown here. Anti heal onto Becky from that rampage. Now with Bernard. So still solid from the Valiant. Second defense in a row. Three minutes in the time bank, and that's a lot of ultimates exp expended there they don't from it. Spark. And in two in two fights, Becky's found the duplicate, so he's kind of fragging on the echo. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of me is like, you know what? If he's losing confidence in the Genji, and you know, some teams do like the echo on the Junker C here. I, I respect it, and he's proving why this is kind of working out in their favor. As long as D doesn't get fragged, it'll be okay. They just got to get there. It is. Save two Junk Queens present. D is Save about to go it. down. Lengzo gets dropped, so now you're missing a support option, but they were able to sustain D up in time. Becky's about to get a rampage online. 2% away. One more tap does it. Straight into the middle of the fight. Only catches Bernard. We'll change the focus over as Dio gets dropped. So they actually lost two Junker Queens at oh the same my. time there because Becky lost the uh, duplication. And there's it a bunch of kills picked Bernard, up for Spark. But Bernard doesn't care. He just he fragged out. Yeah. He's still alive. Got two kills. Killed Dia while rampaged. Um, and to be fair, that was not a better rampage for Becky there. It's like, take a, shoot, pick a poison, which player, which one signal player do you want? Because you're not getting more than one. And now as we hit the, the end of this sort of last straight on Junker C, Hung Jo has three outfits on board, one of them being burnt out. Yeah, Bob's somewhere in this fight. I think he's on the back of the payload. Irony. Pass that pack over to Alfie. He needed it. The beat comes in from Super Rich as well. Lengzo like answers Dia, back. Dia. Rampage from Dia finds free. They need to convert this into kills right now, but the shout comes out from Bernard to sustain him. Shy clings onto life for a little bit longer. They only lose Super Rich. That might be enough for Valiant to put the brakes on the payload once more. Bernard and have themselves one more defense. Yeah, they're not going to be over staggering this out any longer than they need to. One minute 20 left. Going to have a Rampage and a Blade going up against the Lone Strange Rally. Strangely yes. defendable now for the Valiant, given that they get to push up as well, but also beyond that. Um, Dia's Rampage, Big Valley, three members caught down. Super Rich and Shy being bled down by the Rampage itself, and then Bernard kind of, uh, well, can't receive too much help there. Big carnage hit from Dia, but low HP. Oh my god. Play comes through from Alfie. Finds nothing as Becky snipes them. That was a big ultimate being thrown in there from the spark. Not able to convert it just yet. Final attempt. They're looking towards Bernard's rampage here to save them. And they probably will, I think. 
Valiant don't have really any defense here. What they need to do is space themselves properly to make sure that they mitigate the effects of the Rampage as much as possible uh, so that only one or maybe maximum two people get caught. I think if Burner can somehow find a big Rampage here, it'll be over for the Valiant, but yep. Valiant should know that. They should know that there's a Rampage coming. Trying to save space for the time being. Don't, don't want to get too green here. here. Don't want to get picked. Oh, Carnage finds Stomach. Burner! Ducking and covering. Easy harm. Taking a few shots. Could go down here. Super rich. Able to convert that one. It opens it up with a spark. They'll push through the underpass. Try and get to this payload. Make it score dupe. Over time's in effect. Yeah, got to go for the duplication on the Junker Queen. Dia might be able to get a rampage up their own if this keeps going on long enough. The, the longer this goes, the better it is for Burner because he can force the Valiant to group together now. There's the duplication coming in. Two Junker Queens. Gonna be dancing into the fight. There's the rally being popped by Irony to move forward. The duplication Session goes down. One. Becky doesn't get that. Dia is so close to staying up, but won't find the rampage from this one, unfortunately. And that's another member down, but they are playing against the serious spawn advantage. They need to make them decisive. No one touches, and the spark get the completion in overtime. Well, no one can touch. I mean, the bob gets blocked out by I think Bernard's body, and uh, Linksa was either too slow. They got booped away, and either so like. Yeah, unless Valiant could get a single Rampage off either of their two Junker Queens, just not going to happen. Dia, I believe, ended up on something like 98-99 as well. But Becky just couldn't get the damage done to build up. It's actually, it's strangely difficult to build up a Rampage on even a duplicated Junker Queen. It is strangely difficult because a lot of things block Ult Charge here. Shout, Green HP blocks Ult Charge. Rally Sound Barry all block Ult Charge. So, can be hard to build that one up, and it doesn't get built up. Ali Valiant losing a player. Who do they lose right at the top? Easy Han, uh, they, Rain, it Shai, was, Poking yeah, it was out Easy Han. Or two. And then Super yeah, and then for the for the Ali Oop, right? So, set up some low yep. HP. Set up Easy Han to be on low HP. Super zooms in for the kill, and Spark have a 5v4 after that. So, that, that one death kind of gave Spark the impetus to finish the entire map. My ultimate is charging. Uh, let's make sure that we double check our garages today, Avril. Let's make sure that the uh, the garage remains closed. The car is behind the double door. Just lock the uh, car. Don't leave the keys. Lock the car. Just don't leave the, the keys in the ignition. Set the alarm. Maybe get a guard dog or something. I don't know. Let's just not have a repeat of what we had on our last attempt at this. Mickey's going to start on expected. the Echo. So this is more than just okay. a C play now. This is more like a confidence play, like, or rather a lack of confidence play, in that uh, no more confidence <laughs> in the Genji, and just see how the uh, the Echo performs. But I think the Echo is actually the weakest on A. The Echo improves as we move through A to B, then C, obviously strongest on C. So it's going to be a bit of a long, grueling fight here for Becky to build up to a position where the Echo is considered good. Well, the good news for the Valiant is they've already made it to the final choke, the kill box that I like to call it. And But uh, Hangzhou Spark, though, this is actually also where they want to hold. So this is the position that they're going to start committing. Tight corridors. Very good for the Spark right now. Just going to hold it there. Burner quite safely hiding around the corner. Pop out when they need to. Becky playing low and slow, flies around the corner, goes for a quick pick as the rest of the team emerges from the outside. They're putting all their attention onto Burner. Shy getting a little bit of the traction from the outside, but it's two kills going away. A spark, and they poked the Hornet's nest. They kicked it even, and the spark, they stung back. And Becky tried to get an execution there, and I think it was Alpha Yi, but Alpha Yi had already dashed away, so no connection on the focusing beam. Easy harm will get Shy down the dynamite. It's going to be 5v4. Can the Valiant do, do something with that? Obviously, no Alton is just here, but they can push on forward. Oh no, surely, for Alfie. Guys, surely. They have to convert it. Convert it, please, I beg you. Finally, Lengser finds the conversion. Pushes Spark all the way back into this corridor. Very easy lineup for Becky. The focusing beam, this Dia getting the final blows. And they get themselves point A, time extension, they keep the momentum going. Very easy to convert a 5v4 into a fight win here. So it's, that's why it's like more rare that if you see a team come back from a 4v5, it's like probably shouldn't be happening at all. Uh, this meta more than any meta, you know, once you get that one frag, the entire team fight just kind of falls to the wayside side of the team that has one frame. Mind you, we've seen that multiple times now in this series alone and in many others as well. Now we have ultimates available. Duplicate. It's Bob. 
don't know if there's going to be a good chance to use the bob on the high ground here because that would be ideal because if you use the bob to instantly shove the hunger spike off the high ground setting themselves up there where is the deployment of the bob they got to do something they might want to go they can't they're not pushing anymore so they need it they're going in right now okay. oh becky they did something though avril give them credit just not uh, Becky, the thing Becky they wanted knew to do. He messed up there because you see it from his facial expression, you see it from his POV. He actually didn't yeah. even have Shy on half HP. He was hoping that Shy being on like 60% HP, the mm. beam would do enough damage to put Shy under 50 and then the beam could finish it off. But no, nah. like I mean, you just didn't do enough damage to Shy to even go for that. And then Shy just completely swats you down with that rail. So he needs to stop it. Emergence with the rally. Double support, Ultimate's hell. Becky go. finally pulls it do. up onto Shy. There you go, attempt complete. Bob comes out as well here from Easy Hunt. Hunting down Bernard. Beat sustains them. So does the rally. Becky gets duplication onto the Junk Queen. There is the Rampage finding two, but they don't convert Bernard's efforts as before they go down. Alfie has the blade. going to hold on to this one, though. This is already a lost fight for the Spark. They can't reclaim this. It's all about the storm. All right. I mean, the double shout gives... I mean, I saw Easy Hunt there with, like, twice the amount of normal HP he would normally have. So... Ex even more important when you know sound barrier had been burned you're trying to block out Bernard's rampage damage so extra shout counts for a lot there whether you build up your own rampage or not and a fast cap on B so uh, for all that was problematic with how this map has been for the Valiant so far gotta say attack has been pretty damn good they lost one fight on A they won the subsequent fight B ended up being pretty damn good for them considering it was a bit of a slowdown they had to do a bit of a reset as well once becky overcommitted on the shy but straight away the next fight becky makes up for it by fragging out shy giving the 5v4 and valiant push on forward and currently it's on the spark to stop this one the blade should be coming through this fight right you can sustain Alfie himself and not be anti-healed by that rampage don't give Alfie time to breathe. He's not going to be able to pull up the blade, Avril. And it's another one fight as the momentum ticks forward for the LA Valiant. It's a big stagger that's about to come onto Shy as well. So, you know, the payload's been pushing the whole way through. Shy's not going to respawn for another few seconds here, which means the payload is going to come down to the final uh, straight dash. Still waiting for this Alfie blade. It will, it will now definitely come through this fight because I don't see anything that can necessarily stop it. But. The longer this goes, the closer Sashin does get towards a rally. Tucked away in the corner. Alfie. Spotted. He needs to find an opportunity to pull out that blade before he gets chumped again. There's a lot of focus put onto him right now. In a 1v1 versus yep. Becky, actually, and he defends the Mega Health back, I think. Uh, Alright, well, now, now they rich. have to go. Hangzhou has to defend now. There's the blade preemptively. Alfie tucks away to the side just to get a breather as he sustains himself back up. Bob gets thrown out here help. by Shy. They're replacing the member. They take him out very quickly. Rally from Sarshin as well as they move forward. Irony boops Sarshin back out of the fight as Dia finds the second kill. They're up in the skybox still. Becky doesn't go into the room, but Dia's happy to sit there. Just sit in the front with the scatter gun. They're walking it over the line. They've got themselves a few members there to contest it. Alfie holding the deflectors. Irony's rally. Ticks away. Lenza has beat as an emergency if anything goes really wrong here. Becky with the rampage doesn't connect and Burner will take them out. The chance here for the Spark to deflect this onslaught. They've lost one already. Becky with the duplication might get another Becky attempt to be able to she use this it. one. He's not finding it. Goes through. Just isolates Burner off to the side. Alfie and Shite aren't anti heal but they're not getting healing as it is. They need to focus on Burner. They're unable to do it. Alfie finds Becky out the sky after the duplication. Spawn advantage really helping out the spark here, but I don't think it's enough for them. It's Valiant. They've got control of the payload. They're going to walk it over the line. They're at a 1 minute 34 difference in the time bank, but we get yeah. to see Junkertown all over again. I got to say, that was that was the, that was was Becky for me, for sure. When Dia goes down, yep. Becky holds down the fort because he copies a Junk Queen, allows him to still have a tank in any other circumstance. If he doesn't have the duplicate available, or he doesn't get the dupe on the Junker Queen, they don't have a tank, they lose that fight. But because they do have a tank, it's like a 4v5 where Becky can build up a Rampage very quickly as the only tank available when Spark are kind of down on resources as well. I think the Shout would have... You know, the Shout got used there, and, you know, here this is where Becky gets the shot opportunity to pick up. Uh, Easy Han, meanwhile, has a full safe position to shoot from where no one's able to get on top of him. And you see as well, they, they then 
turn that rampage specifically onto Burner. I think you know, he had the choice of maybe going to others, but he also understands if Burner just dies here, I can focus him down. I rampage, I come out of dupe form, I sticky into fly into beam. Burner could do nothing about it, just gets melted. That means that when Dio returns the fight, and he does, now Valiant are the ones that have a jungle queen advantage and they get to push it across the line. See if the uh, Spark gets to do something creative to break a full hold potential here from the LA Valiant. Different setup from the Valiant this time. I think they might not be going as close as we saw them previously, although they might do that when they, the door's they're hiding, open. But I think they're, they're waiting for the TP. For they're hiding, but they're, they're basically... I think they're preempting maybe the TP position as well. Yeah, they were. But it's not going to come through. Didn't come through, through though. I think he's thinking, like, do I want to match Echo? No, I think Genji's still playing. I agree. I think Genji on A is just better. Um, but as you saw towards the end there, Becky started having a much better time on C, where I expect the Echo to be performing. Uh, and in fact, if you are the Valiant, not only have you sort of given up on the forward hold entirely, uh, you've given up, uh, you're basically setting up only for this now choke position to defend the open ground. Kind of like what Hangzhou was doing, to be fair. Dynamite coming out, but it's Easy Han and Becky on the back throw. Shout from Dia. Bernard is back as well. Pops everyone back up. Shy relatively uncontested at the moment on Sasha Sojourn. Load. It's Alfie. Sasha will be sustained though. And that's Becky the time right now. Oh no! Alfie's gone down. This is overtime ticking. They haven't pushed it far enough, I think, Avril. Dia, if they can just seal the deal here, clear off the rest of the spark. They're in a great position to convert this on the offense. Trading off Shy for Easy Han. Spark's still alive. They do have the spawn advantage oh, the to play with. Though. Bernard takes out Becky. This is big for the spark. They can keep them going. Like you said, the rally being committed. Super Reach is about to have the beat as well. Don't think they're going to need to use it at present. You can see Valiant get ready oh, for the start. A headshot from Sarshin. Can't get the pullback just a little bit too high on the Jagged Knife. But that's good enough to keep them going towards the completion of point A. The, the rally difference is just monstrous. I mean, you can't you can't go through all of that HP. Yeah. And then beyond that as well, like you sort of mentioned, Super Edge has the insurance policy of the extra sound barrier, and as Spark get into ultimates, they will cap Valiant. Don't have what it takes to stop the cap from coming on through, but they are desperate to get these frags. They will get shy. Surely this is the 5v4 that works. Super Edge is going to have to beat. Yeah, he does. Beat, there's a bomb thrown out as well. It's actually 64 when you think about it. Rally from Sarshin. Lengs is about to have the beat as well. No support ultimates available. Alfie comes in on the tracer, but it lost Bernard. This is it. Valiant gets to shut it down. Point A is the benchmark that Valiant will have to meet when they go on to their offensive. And it just seems still like a very defendable spot. I think if you are the spark, you're happy with that one minute. Not hoping for too much more. You know, one minute cap A has always been my standard for like what is considered winnable for a one minute time bank. Uh, for Valiant, have 234, so they're allowed to make a couple more extra mistakes and still be in a position to cap. Uh, once A is capped, though, I think it should be done. Hangzhou Spark would have to do the most insane close hold, spawn camp type of hold to prevent the Valiant from winning. So really, for Spark, it's hold A or lose this map. But there's a hope for the Valiant to start a reverse sweep. This would be it because they have the extra 134 in the time bank. They have, all things considered, played Junker Town better than Spark so far. Mm -hmm. And you struggle to disagree with that. See how they line up though. Spark. Not like them. They might not, they're probably not going to go for that full hold. They're probably going to play around this choke point once more, but hopefully play around it a little bit better than they did last time. There's a risk though because if you play the choke further back and you lose that fight, you might not get a second attempt at defending A, and for Spark, defending A is critical. Whereas you hold the initial spawn, you are guaranteed two fights. So that's the trade-off here. It is more risky though, because you're fighting right outside the attacking spawn, and um, if you lose, you do snowball the opponents. It come down to how much you back yourself. Ash Echo to start out with, Valiant playing technically slightly off meta here. Yeah, they can make it work. It's a couple of dinks. No headshots connecting just yet. It's walking this payload into the choke point. Yeah, getting some ultra the dynamite as well. Put a bit of pressure on super. It actually meant the spark had to hide there. So as the payload now is about to leave the kill box area, the spark are going to be forced into action. They can't just chill forever. Go, yes, go for the assassination on super rich. 
Sustains huh? a life. Oh my goodness. Should have converted that Lucio, but a lot of support coming healing. in from Irony there with the packs and the healing as well. Irony keeping Super Rich alive. Super Rich, a little bit of fancy feet in the air, will keep himself alive. Uh, and that 134 is about to be burnt down in a 30 seconds. I'm shy at risk, but they're not close enough back. to convert with me. Alfie into the thick of it. There's the carnage. Sashins goes down. You're on Spanish Burn burn off. Yes. That's actually huge for Valiant to keep this push forward. forward. You need to find some more kills. Becky's low. Not got the range to get in there, but Alfie finally takes the echo out of the sky. Shy will lose their life. It's Alfie again doing everything they can to keep the fight going in favor of the Spark. And it's actually at a point now where the sport advantage isn't too massive for the LA Valiant, but they are the getting the point faster. It. They can just bomb, and the bomb can basically win a fight for them. With this irony super low. Oh, it's over. It's all over. Where, again, capping A is all that sort of matters here. So once you've capped A, Spark have to be in a position to hold. 0 0.41 meters. 0 0.41 meters. And the bomb can punch. be the finishing touch. Alfie gets to the point. Dynamite there. Oh, That's going to hit multiple members. Shout counter. Bob goes in. Takes out Alfie. They're starting this point from a 4v5. Yes, they have the beat advance, Stunned. but he's still on the point. Bob was the one who capped it for them! <laughs> I told you. I told you. Bob would be the finishing blow here. He would be the one to get it done. Not only that, but you'll have noticed as well that Alfie dies on 98% to the Bob. The Bob gets thrown in, and the impact damage of the Bob, which people forget is in the game, people think Bob is just a turret there, like a big Torb. Like, Bob is the level 3 Torbjorn turret that we no longer have. However, <laughs> he also does do impact damage when he hits somebody while sprinting in. And that's what killed Alfie. And had that not happened, Alfie would have had the blade, could have turned around that fight. But, yeah, I mean, technically I'd say that, yeah, Spark didn't touch, but also I think they lost the fight. I think they were, I think they were definitely losing that fight to me. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple ultimates were coming online, so, you know, you could, you could still call it, like, an extension. But the Bob's value in that fight is undeniable. I think the Bob was uh, going to be a big carry point, and he was. The sixth man of the Valiant doing the work for them. The beginning of the reverse sweep for the Valiant started now. When we come back, we're going to have a push map for you. Do not go anywhere.
Reverse sweep has started for the LA Valiant. They just took Junkertown. And uh, yeah, they actually looked quite dominant on it towards the end there. Very controlled from them, yep. especially on their offense. And then also the second attempt as well. They seem to have it all in the bag. Technically, you could argue it was a Bob C9, but as we've already discussed, Avril, the fight was pretty much lost after Alpha. You got taken out before it began. 6 3 4. Hey, Bob counts. Yep. Bob counts as an yep. extra member. If the payload says he counts, then he counts. And the payload. <laughs> Definitely said he counts. As BP. Bob literally capped the point. Uh, it was only 0.41, so you know, just uh, just someone lightly breathing on the payload to do it. A really big shout out uh, to I think a big performer on that map for the Valiant was actually Dia. Looking at stats here, mm -hmm. um, Becky had some reasonable moments as did Easy Han, but Dia stepped the hell up compared to Hollywood. Now, notably, I you know, didn't have some great things to say about Dia's junk win Hollywood, but he 180 to that hero completely into Junker Town. Um, went for a total of 22 final blows, where the next highest was a second tied equal between Easy Han and Becky on 14. And then you have Alpha Yi on 13. Shy had, unfortunately, a very woeful game. Some reason, he, he ended up dying way more on this map than any other map. And it does kind of remind me, as we head into New Queen Street, of, you know, the early Shanghai and Seoul matches for the Hangzhou Spark, where they just focused down Shy over and over. All of Hangzhou Spark only had about 11 deaths, or Irony had only had 10 deaths, but then Shy had 16 deaths. So he was specifically dying just that much more than everybody else and being targeted that much more. You can see it from Becky's POV as well, trying to fly into his face as the Echo. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but, you know, Dia's damage output was insane. His final blows, really, really high. Highest amount of elimination as well at 43 to 22 final blows. You know, just absolutely rocking the stats compared to Hollywood. Three, two, one. Well, let's see how they do on New Queen Street. We have the emergence on to the point. Gonna have fighting on the high ground as expected. All right, who gets on the kill? May for this one? So they're taking a page out of the book of uh, London Spitfire. This is what Backbone's been doing in a lot of their gameplay. I would have imagined that if you really wanted to commit to the May, you should play Innovation here, but. I think the, the backup of option of Becky going back to the Diva, sorry, not the Diva, the, the Genji is important as well. Very muted first fight, but it's easy hard on the back foot, as with Lengza. No kills converted for the time being. Shy goes aggressive, oh, tries to find the guy's spear. Crossfire and just absolutely demolishes easy hard. You saw the rest of the team compacting him into that tunnel, and it was just shy to cut off the exit. Dia turning up with one return kill onto Bernard, but this is a very conclusive fight for the Spark to win it out in the first conflict. Yeah, I mean, just a lot of damage where Bernard doesn't end up dying, and Shy with the brilliant flank of the Easy Hunt, I believe, or somebody on the Valiant to get rid of them and convert to five versus four into a one fight. And now Becky gives up on that May, and uh, Easy Hunt gives up on the Sojourn as well, so we're going back over towards Echo, uh, Echo Ash, and to be fair, I think Ash is very good on this map. Uh, so Valiant will once again, this is where they had a great performance versus Fusion as well, where Easy Hunt played the Ash and him and decided not to, which was a little bit weird. And uh, Valiant won the equation versus from off the back of Easy Hunt Ash. They're going to try and pilot that one again to victory. Very aggressive from the Spark, taking the fight over to him. Yeah, no HP sure, really to play with here, we will get taken down. We lose Super Rich and Shy in the Carnage. So there is an advantage here for the Valiant, and they're going to utilize it by pushing back the Spark and even get the tax kill on Irony back out at the end. 
Maybe too much there from uh, Alfie. Himself in a difficult position as they're picking up even more. They're on the hunt for that Genji. Oh, Alfie, wow. you invited that one by jumping over the wall. <laughs> there's uh, there a little go. bit of a sit down from Becky. Uh, sends another, another uh, you know, sign seal deliver message personally to Alfie. That one went straight into the DMs. I'm sure uh, every single every single crouch you saw there was a, a was another message sent in the DM. And you could try to dono wall that one, but typically you can't ignore that. <laughs> At least Becky actually killed him this time and didn't have lengths to steal the kill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's no longer a group DM, it's just one-on-one -on -one at the moment. Becky up inside, duplication Speaking available. of ultimates, I mean, Hunter and Spark actually had the ultimates to push on through. Oh, okay. They shot either one to take down Becky, so... Bye, Becky. Oh, that was sneaky there by Shy, the old skid and shoot. Taking Lengzer out with the overclock and Spark. Gonna be moving this back around again. Done. He wasn't done. He wasn't done. He got had one left in the chamber. Yeah, he had one left and he wanted it. Could have been Easy Hunt as well, but Easy Hunt will live to tell, live to fight another day yet yeah, and tell the story of it. Uh, should be the defending checkpoint here, given that Valiant have everybody alive. Spark just waiting for an opportunity to walk on it with this blade. It'll be Blade versus Bob Duplicate. Easy Hunt on an angle as well. Becky changing over. Double Junker Queen. Dia has the Rampage available. No ultimate shoes just yet from the spot. They will pop the rally. There's a rally from Sashi and Beatles used by Lengzer in that. Shy's gone down before they even commit to it. Becky climbing towards the Rampage. Not been committed. They're going to use one. It'll be Becky's Dia holding onto theirs for the time being. Dominant fight win there for the Valiant. <laughs> Another emote as well. Becky's going off. Yeah. Becky just doesn't Becky, care. Becky, at this you better point. win this map. You better win this map, Becky, because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's getting a bit if extreme Becky now. Win. We had a bit of crouching <laughs> earlier. We got some emotes happening now. He's about he's about to straight send some messages into the all chat after this. It's the only escalation available now. Given most NA players start with the all chat, so you know, a couple stages of escalation for Valley before we get there. Big Rampage fight, man. Is big. It finds five members of the Spark. Kills all momentum on that push. They were coming in hot for that conflict. Alfie, focus down, but they lose Sarshin. Werner oh, has a rampage of their own. Don't think they're going to have to use it in this fight. The Shy is just clicking heads. Diaz, the second on the shopping block. Oh. Becky out of the sky. Woo. Shy finding four members in that fight. And the Spark moves yep. the payload back. Yeah, he's currently popping off, and I don't think he had the most comfortable game on Junker Town. Uh, it's, it seems like whatever player I, I sort of call out for having not the best performance <laughs> on the player map then ends up popping off in the following map. Dia, Hollywood, not great. Junker Town, amazing. Shy, Junker Town, not great. So far, New Queen Street, amazing. Okay, they're just in time to stop the checkpoint capture. Rampage, find Blanger and Dia. There's two members, but they were able to convert it to Dia. They lost two in the carnage. Shouldn't use the word carnage when that's actually an ability now, but hey-ho. If Becky gets another kill here, he's about to send something in the chat, I'm sure. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. No? Give him a crouch, give him an emote. Well, he, no, he if he gets shy, he, he needs a, shy. He needs a damage dealer. The problem is no. Shy's killed him too many times, so, so to get one up, Becky's got to get shy down and then... Yeah. Then uh, he'll he'll send a cheeky whisper over or something. <laughs> whisper? But we... No, it needs to be an all, otherwise we won't see it. Oh, for the entertainment of the fans, I hope he do he doesn't whisper and he shows it to everybody. But shows it, you know, yeah. show the class. But <laughs> 48 meters to 57. So I think the the the, yeah, the checkpoint did actually come on through. That's 5v4 now. So every single time Valiant get close, they they get about capping, they just lose too many members. The shy is fragging again. So we'll create effect, that's two. Create some space. Still keeping an eye on Dia. Has to use it with the left click. Dude, wow. shy. Just dominating these fights right it's now. Ridiculous. I, mean, I shouldn't be surprised it is shy, but I'm surprised because you know he's he's had some off maps now. This map is just un un undeniably so far pretty much all shy. And I'm starting to feel like this echo is a is a liability. And Becky can't swap yet because he's got the duplicate, doesn't want to give up the ultimate, but you just see how easy it is for Shy to destroy Becky every single time they meet. It's incredibly one-sided for Shy in that matchup. Uh, and I think it's just the open space in Queen Street where, you know, the Genji just has more value here. We'll maybe see that from Alfie's POV. 
let's go for the play to find oh, Laser. Messed up the dash. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Rally was also used there by Sarshin, so they got well, supposedly both support through the field. Three members here. That's the deal breaker there for Bernard. I think he lost his rampage. I mean, they lost a lot more than that. The team's just been absolutely dismantled by that one. And there wasn't enough actual pushback there from the Valiant, so it does mean checkpoints will be capped by the Spark this time around. And this stalemate between the two checkpoints has finally been broken. Well, yeah, I think they... Well, we've had the checkpoint already. Hunter Spark actually already capped the checkpoint earlier. Uh, it's the Valiant that have struggled. And I talk about the Becky Rampage because while the fight was over, what's important for the Valiant is they need to go for frags here. So even if the Rampage does go through, but they lose the fight, the Rampage allows them to collect even just one kill. That gives them a lot to work through on the push. So low Dia went and immediately Alfie goes in. But that counter Rampage from Dia to reset the fight was fantastic. Alfie. Nice right now, needs to stay alive! Oh, they cannot There's get There's four him. members of Spark on like half HP, but Valiant just couldn't chase him down. And now they're actually going to be able to heal up and, you know, re-engage this fight. It's another Becky. kill from Shanta Becky. That's what I'm saying. It's way too easy to kill an Echo as a Sojourn on this map. Becky's just not changing though. The excuse of having the ultimate has now been removed. They're going to wait out the mob, I feel like. They can just hide behind the bus. It's not the most optimal placing. It does give some respite. But they can't really use the bomb to convert anything else. Just a delay. The bomb is just to make up for the fact yeah. that oh. Becky went down to give them another five, to give the five members up. And I think this is, you know, the time is the biggest factor here. The fact that Valiant haven't even enabled the checkpoint stall means we still have to see that later on. They still have to wait that extra three seconds for the stall. Becky's lucky that Shy didn't have higher rail charge than 60 there. Otherwise, I'm sure that Becky would have been swatted down from the sky again. We're about to reach 90 plus meters, about to be 95 to 100 before Valiant are even in position to maybe fight. I think this might also be insurmountable progress for the Spark. I feel like there's so many fights in between now and then to it's kind of double, match the it's, distance. It's that, twice the distance. Yeah, Spark have, Spark have effectively won the map already. This is just like Valiant need to break the hold now and get trocking. Otherwise, this is already over and the series is done. And you can't be starting yeah. like that, Sasha gets caught by the Jagged Blades. It's another clean fight. They're on the cusp of actually completing the map now, yeah, Avril, let alone yeah. being able to have pushback from Valiant. I don't think they will finish because there's still like 20 meters left to go, but they're gonna they're gonna get close. They're gonna get so close that I mean I think you could write this map off at like the 90 yeah. meter mark. At the 120 meter mark, and what can you write it further off than initially writing it off already? Can you <laughs> double write it off? Yeah. But there's the beat from Lengzu as they emerge from the spawn. Cal beat comes out from Super Reach. We've got a ballet from Alpi oh, finding Sarshin. They might be able to cap off the back of his fight as he cuts down Dia as well. No tank, no support. Change the attention over to Becky. He's sniped again. Bernal actually getting away with that one. Finish Don't it. even cap need it. them to do it. Cap. And then drop the bag. Where's the crouch? You know you want to do it after that one. Oh. But Hanzo Spark going to be able to come out there with the win. 3-1 scoreline. LA Valiant unable to find the victory once more against the Spark. Can't reverse sweep it. And there you have it, the beginning of the campaign for the Spark. They got the tough matches out of the way earlier on in the season. 3-3 three, three is the golden number, as you reminded us at the beginning of this matchup, Avril. And Spark are on the path to be able to achieve that with this victory today. Yeah. Pink team, too respectful. No bags being dropped there from their perspective. And my goodness. Wow, what an ending. What a way to finish things off. Yeah, Valiant's severely dropped the ball there. It was competitive and close on New Queen Street until it wasn't. And I truly did feel like for a little bit of time there, just a brief few moments, when they were kind of fragging evenly, when Easy Hunt and Becky were kind of getting it done, you know, the Echo still seemed okay. I'm like, maybe we can go to a map five. Maybe this could be a reverse sweep. But, you know, the, the longer it goes, the more you give time for Shy to pop off, the more Becky just gets annihilated by Shy time and time and time again. Look, uh, you could argue that Becky had Alpha Yi's number a couple times there, uh, which would debatably, you know, justify the couple of crouch in the emote there. But at no yep. point did he have Shy's number. And that's, uh, that's uh, to me, that was a, the major issue there was Shy popped off on your Queen Street. Given, you know, Shy to me still wasn't performing to a very high standard on Junkertown or maybe even some of the other maps, but this last map was all Shy, and Becky was mostly invisible due to Shy, and the refusal to swap off the Echo, to me, was a, was a big factor there as well.
Just didn't. It seemed like Becky's confidence on the Genji just kind of got knocked earlier on in the series. Just unable to do it. I think, um, looking at probably like player of the game, I think maybe it's maybe Shy Montage coming in. I don't know. We're still waiting to find out who that is, but we're getting a yeah. shy, <laughs> shy Montage right this, now. I don't know if this is the player of the match or, we, or we're about to get the player of the match. But it's uh, always good what? to see that sliding shot. But I mean, I'm pretty sure there was a bit of clay, clay pigeon shooting as well from Shy at one point. I think we saw um, Lengsa get booped and Shy just take him out of the sky on the way through. Okay, looking over maps, uh, Shy's Busan was reasonable. Top fragger on Busan. Didn't have any like egregious stat lines in terms of deaths or anything else. Uh, Hollywood competitive with everybody else, but did have the most deaths. Uh, and I think Alfie and Bernard definitely had a better map there. Junker Town, we've talked, uh, talked plenty about already. I don't really need to go back there. Uh, so here we go, I think Shy is play of the match, but uh, mostly, I would say mostly gained off the back of the last map. Because it took, it, he started yes. good. Middle two maps, not great. Final map, disgusting. Final map, like truly <laughs> disgusting in terms of his output. Um, and 69% uh, railgun accuracy as well. I'm going to trust that everyone's going to be mature about that. Nice. Uh, nice. Stat line. And, uh, you know, we're all adults here, except for the people in chat and we think they're all children. Uh, I'm sure there's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's. Sorry, sure there's if you put rail some, in I think Tay is.